Well, this is awkward. Um, apparently there's a ship here. <laughs> oh dear. Hey kid, hey, welcome back to Scarvy in the Atlas with my little weekly update. Um, not sure what was going on with my original loading in, but my ship's back when I logged out and logged back in again. Um, one of the nice things that I'm noticing at the moment is my water's looking good. It's not choppy, it's not losing frames. Um, I'm able to move around my base. So whatever they did uh, that caused the performance loss in larger bases seems to have been resolved. Quite happy about that. Still haven't resolved my invisible buildings. So still got an invisible farmhouse, invisible market, and invisible warehouse. At least it actually collects stuff, so I mean that's good. But yeah, there's still no single player market. So that's still not a thing. But the thing we're going to go look at today is a small armoured dock. I'm going to get myself one now and we'll go and have a look at it. Okay, now we get the comparison. Might need to uh, fly up and just show it off. Okay, so here we have the comparison, I guess. Uh, so that is the small armoured shipyard, and that's the large. And yeah, that's twice the size really I guess um, it's basically yeah, they've just implemented this there's been a number of changes I guess uh, in terms of some of the other things that they've done um, the small one here has 20 million health and apparently the large one has like 30 million I think it was Have yeah, a quick look see the difference 30 million yep uh, apparently they've reduced the cost uh, whereas before it was um, uh, where is it? It was 500 gold every 24 hours and now it's 150 gold every 24 hours. So the price drop is actually quite significant. Um, I think when I was looking at it before it was uh, might have been every five minutes or something silly like that was one gold. Um, something around those lines anyway. Uh, the cost is uh, very, very, very expensive now because um, you, yeah, 10,000 gold to build the small and it's 50,000 gold to build the large. I mean, you need a lot of money to build one of these. And imagine if you lost it. I and mean, that's pretty significant outlay just to uh, have somebody come by and try and take it down. Thankfully, they've given it a ridiculous amount of health. And really, it's going to need that, I guess, to uh, really do what it needs to do. Um, they've done a number of, I guess, fixes, uh, or I say fixes, and there's a bit of adjustment around the armoured docks and how many ships it can protect. Apparently you could actually get two in there, and apparently ships were decaying inside these things, which would, um, people would actually get onto their ships after a while and their ships would just fall apart as soon as they dropped the anchor. So, you know, it's, uh, they obviously have a few things that they're dealing with. And of course, you know, straight off the back of this, they put up an announcement that they essentially, uh, have a number of uh, game breaking bugs that they're trying to look into with game crashes and loss of data and things like that. So in their usual style, they've implemented something and something significant went wrong in the background. And we'll have to wait and see when the uh, quick hot fix for that one comes through. Um, I guess another thing is that the Brigantine, they have changed the price of that one from 25,000 down to 18,000, which is uh, probably quite good, really. It was the jump in price. And I mean, people have complained about it. Um, 
I haven't really explored too much into it. I'm still waiting for them to actually implement a fair bit more of the functionality before I really look too far. But yeah, it's, it is what it is. And it looks like the common ships have now got a higher level. Uh, it was 42, it's now 50. They've made a number of changes to the markets in terms of how it searches and things like that. Uh, but, you know, again, the single player it's still just is not implemented. Which I find a little bit odd because from a server perspective, they have actually made it so that you can trade within your own company. Which means that you could implement the same code in single player because as a on the single player you actually do have a company and obviously when you're doing a non-dedicated server you're pulling in four other people or like that into your own single player environment and inside your own company and so why you couldn't oh, i guess with the tethering it makes it a bit rough but um yeah the same functionality should be able to be replicated in single player but apparently they just haven't bothered to do that but you yeah. know Maybe one day, maybe not. We'll wait and see. Uh, other than that, uh, they changed it so that the warehouses and the farmhouses could only be enabled and dis they disabled by players within the same company that built it. And that one seems like a no-brainer to me. It's like, why would you do that otherwise? Well, other than that, um, there's some known issues. Apparently, the markets are not showing up uh, all of the available markets. Uh, and the upkeep cost of the armor docks apparently is not... Uh, showing properly all the time either so there's a couple of known issues but they're really minor and i mean in terms of the actual release this time around i find this one really minor too you know the release of a single building which is a copy of another building and a few tweaks to the existing mechanics um hopefully the next week's one or the next the following week we'll actually see a bit of a bigger update it would be nice but uh yeah i'm not holding too many hopes for quick development at this point They've still got a fair bit going on by the looks of it. Well, unfortunately this one is a bit of a, a short and sweet update because there wasn't really much to look at. But the patches are still flowing, uh, albeit that they took a week off to do a little Q&A last week. Uh, really, I'm just hoping for something meaty next time. Alright, well thanks for watching again and I'll see you in the next one.